Hello everybody and Merry Christmas to you all. This is the YouTube re-upload of the feature discussion from episode 231 of Conversation Street where we counted down our top 10 Corrie Christmas Day moments ever. Ho ho ho! Gemma says ho 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 to you. Thank you for your contribution to this my darling. Oh welcome. So yeah this was recorded back in 2016 um, and there's been plenty of fairly interesting Christmas Day things that have happened I since. I think so there have been. I think that happened as well. And, and we've, we've watched some of the old ones as we've well. We've expanded our repertoire of past Christmases. Yes. And perhaps would revise this. I think we probably 10. would revise this list. Yes. Having listened to it just the other day. Even some of the orders on there are a bit funny. But this is what we thought four years ago when we made this list of our top 10 Christmas Day moments on Coronation Street. But if you stick around to the very bitter end, maybe you'll find out a little bit about some of the changes and other Christmas Day kind of things that have um, stuck with us since then. So, without further ado, let's pass over to ourselves from four years ago, our top 10 Christmas Day Coronation Street moments. Now, Gemma, yeah. you know one thing that the internet really likes that we don't really ever do? Top 10s? Top 10s, exactly. I was hoping you were going to say something like cute little kitten video so I could say, no, top 10s! Oh, um, okay, uh, topless pictures of female celebrities. No, top 10s. Oh, top tens. We're going to do a Christmas top ten of curry moments this week because it's nearly Christmas and we're feeling festive. Did you know it's nearly Christmas? It's nearly Christmas, just a few more days to go. I did blew in loads and loads and loads of curry Christmas research last night because I, was, I wanted to do something Christmassy for a middle section. So I started the um, quite large task of looking through every single Corypedia entry for the 25th of December um, and making little notes about all the main events and then most of them we're not actually using today but they're still safely stored away on my hard drive to use in another year um, and this is what you do when I go to the cinema to watch Rogue One Gemma went to the cinema last night and I did this I gave it four out of five who was, who was the nerdiest? me going on Corypedia for hours or Gemma seeing Star Wars for hours? I think you're the nerdiest <coughs> oh, that's true um, anyway, we're going to be looking back at some of our favourite festive Coronation Street scenes in this next segment and we've also asked some listeners to tell us some of their picks as well. Um, I, I, we say it's our top 10 favourite but actually it's mine but you have agreed with this list haven't you? I concur. Gemma is concurring Your with my excellency. list and I gave her the option to move things about and she said no it's fine <laughs> <laughs> which means she definitely agrees with me wholeheartedly and there's a few things on here that you haven't seen as well aren't there so yeah, really a few tell. episodes I haven't seen, not a few things that you've written that I haven't seen, because I've read all of it. Yes, yes, a few, a few of the moments are definitely my picks and not yeah, yours. Yeah, so this is only stuff that Michael's seen, not me. Which means that Hilda Ogden's exit is not in here. I have seen it, of course, and it is a very important, it probably could be number one in many Coronation Street yeah. Christmas so top this ten is list. Michael's... This is from 1994 onwards. Michael's top, top ten. ten. Your top ten, That I Gemma think. agrees with. I think, I think it's okay if it's your top 10 darling oh, you're okay. the coronation street expert well, you can tell me what you think I when can you get chime to in. Them, and you can chime in on the bit yeah but yeah no hilda okay but we'll, we'll talk about hilda that. later it's okay right <clears throat> and these aren't necessarily like the nicest things either no because we lead with <laughs> number 10 the most festive of all 2009 sally announces that she has got breast cancer and i, I saw I, this and i went is this the list of the best things that happens at christmas no. or this is well, this is, is memorable this things of? for me. This is memorable things for me, um, and it was just memorable in a completely and utterly heartbreaking way. Um, this was poignant in many different ways. Go on. Well, it was announced. She told him. She told Kevin. Now you're going to have to explain it because I've confused myself. Kelly and Mo Kelly. <laughs> Kelly and Mocky. Kelly and Movin. <laughs> Kevin I love and Kelly Molly. And Movin. Kevin was like, was married, I think, to Sally at the time, but he was having an a, a, an illicit affair with Molly, Tyrone's wife, and they've and they been they've been having a good yeah, been jogging together, and we don't mean jogging in inverted commas, like if Maria had been saying it, for example. They've actually been having some keep fit exercise together, and they decided that the very best possible day to announce um, they were their, um, their affair to everybody is on Christmas Day. 
So they have a little um, meeting in the ghetto. If you think about it, it makes perfect sense because everyone's really happy, so it softens the blow. Because <laughs> everyone could be like, oh, well. <coughs> if you're going to announce something like that, do it before the presents because at least then you've got something to come later to distract you. No, but then you can say, I didn't get you anything. Here's why. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, they, they're going to tell their families. So um, Kevin goes back home to, um, to Sally and he's just about to tell her some very important news. And then we have the good old soap cliche of, oh, but I've got something to tell you first, Kevin. And it was that she had cancer. And Kevin's like, abort mission, abort mission. Yeah. Um, so he, he has to then rush over to uh, Molly and, and stop stop her from uh, spilling the beans to Tyrone. But um, I've, I've just picked this moment because it was very memorable just uh, because of Sally Diviner's fantastic performance during it, to be honest. Um, it was obviously a very sad moment and she, she pulled off the scene e- excellently. But that was obviously partly because... Um, the actress herself had been going through the same thing. The same thing. She'd yeah. been diagnosed at the same time because yeah. she went to have a scan because of the storyline. So, in a way, this is almost the story that saved her life, isn't it? Yeah. And when we watched it at the time, we didn't know this. I, I can't remember when exactly it was that Sally Dinover's breast cancer was made public. But um, it I was... think it was once she knew that she was okay. Was it? I don't remember though. Uh, well, she 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 went off scene for off screen for a long time. She went off to visit her um her sister Gina Gina. Um, what the character? The character did, yeah. And I, and I think I remember at the time thinking, and yeah, I think maybe I thought why why isn't she being shown on screen? So maybe it wasn't known then. But anyway, um, for the scene itself, for uh, for Sally's very um emotional delivery of it, and the fact that it was all embroiled in a secret affair, that gets number ten on my I, list. I kind of like the way that. That they both, they both independently of one another, Kevin and Sally, decided to ruin each other's Christmases. <laughs> well, if you can't ruin... She didn't mean to, she didn't want to say it though, did she? It just came out, I yeah. think. I don't think she meant to announce it on Christmas Day. Like, kids, look at the cracker, look at, look at what, the joke in your cracker. No, I can't remember, I think maybe she was planning to keep it in a, Yeah, and, she was, and, and then it just came bit. out, just like at yeah. Yasmin's <laughs> wedding, the, the sorry, oh, yeah, um, yeah. Sedan. The and, revelation yeah. in the... Yeah. Right, number right. nine. 2009. See, I... Not 2009, 2001. 2001. I remember hearing more about this than I ever remember watching it. I think we did watch it because 2001 was our first well. year of university. So we didn't spend Christmas together that year. So unless you went off and watched this independently no, on your own, I can't believe that. No, it wouldn't have happened. Anyway, Gemma, what is it? Dev ends the episode... Bedding Deirdre. What? <laughs> <laughs> right, so, De- so Deirdre yeah, there was been, trouble um, at the Barlow house. Trouble at the Barlow's, as Peter's per. Peter's drunk, as per. Deirdre's shouting, as per. Deirdre storms out without doing the cooking, as per. No, she usually did do the cooking. She no, but, the... well, nobody wants to eat it. There, uh, there's no Blanche Christmas moments on this list this week, I've just realised. No, your cut. Uh, what is it? She says, uh, your turkey's drier than a camel's backside. I can't remember which year that was, but... Every year. <laughs> yeah, so Deirdre had stormed out and said that they got to sort their own um, dinners out, basically. Meanwhile, Dev is having Christmas with Gina, who um, lots of listeners may her. not remember, but Gemma does, because you've got some strange... She was uh, my favourite <laughs> bar maid. <laughs> when Gemma started watching it, she, had a, she really liked Gina. Gina was my favourite character, and then she left, and I was disgusted. I, why was she your favourite character? Nobody really knows. I don't remember. She's one of she's the least memorable characters ever on the programme. But um, her her parents had come round. I don't know whether this was when Gina introduced... I just introduced... really liked the fact that she had racist parents. <laughs> what you... That was a joke. <laughs> so, so Gina's mum comes round to visit and basically is racist to Dev. Oh, yeah, I don't remember whether this I was the first what... time that they'd met Dev or not. I remember what the did... very first time that Gina's parents met Dev. So I think what I, did the, they say? The, the mum said, "Oh, is that short for like? So you mean it's like for Dave or David or something like that?" And Gina's like, "No, it's short for Devendra." And and the mum and dad were like, "What?" And that, I, well, I don't what know. Racist comments. I don't know say. what coronation. Oh, Corypedia has um, censored whatever it is that um, Mrs. Gina said here. And um, anyway, they, that that ends in a big argument between the two of them. And then Gina goes because Dev insults the mum back. So Deirdre who maybe was working for Dev at that time in the shop. I've got no idea, really. But anyway, she ends up at Dev's flat. Um, they have a few drinks together. And they end up in bed together. It's um, one of the most... <laughs> kind of moments that have been on Coronation Street. But very, very, very memorable. <laughs> one of the most um, memorable one-night stands I've ever been in Corrie, I would say. 
And uh, the worst bit is as well when when they wake wake up. Was it the, was it the next morning or was it maybe later in that episode? And and Deirdre's like sprawled all over Dev's hairy chest and he's got his arm behind him and she's like, oh Dev, I don't know what came over me. And Dev's Dev's look like on his me. face is like. Was that a bit rude? That was very rude. Dev's face is like, what what on earth have I done? Um, but just for the the sheer memorability and sort of gross out factor of it, Deirdre bedding Dev um, makes it to number nine in our list. Number f- eight. Number f- eight. Number eight. I was going to say f- this is to now, 2005. I like, I like this one because this isn't actually as crazy as they're making out that it is. Go on. Because number eight is 2005's Scylla and Yana deep frying the turkey. Hmm. Who are Scylla and Yana, Gemma? Right, so Scylla is y- Les's um, girlfriend. Wife, girl, girlfriend. I don't think they were married by then. I can't friend. remember. And Maybe they were. Fizz and Fizz and Chez's mum. mum. And Yana is her, her busy mate that used to work in the fish and chip shop. So Yana was cool. She was like a very like she was a complete the epitome of side character, wasn't she? She came in just yeah. to be the, the hanger on to Scylla and she was basically her her partner in crime, wasn't she? Yeah. And I was really sad to oh I was not really sad. I was a bit gutted when um she she left because it, they, like months went past without Yana appearing. And um, whenever she popped in, it was always good. But um, yeah, Christmas 2005. I, I remember quite liking Yana. I thought Yana was great just because, well, she was just like silly, wasn't she? She was like utter She was kind of a bit like... Um, slapper. She was kind of a bit like Gemma, almost. She was. Like you you can imagine character. her being Gemma's mum. Yeah, you she, can. That she, would be a brilliant... Can you imagine if they wrote that in? <laughs> she was also a bit like... A bit like Liz, but gone really, really that wrong. Would, do you know what? Yeah, that's true. That would be a really good way, good thing to write in, because there's no reason that anyone would have known this before Gemma reveals it. Yeah, but she's got a different surname. Yana so Lum. So what? Okay. What's Gemma's surname? Winter. How do you know that... Well, first of all, I don't believe that's her real name, because that's a cool name. Remember, she changed the name to Gemini for no particular reason. No, she was born Gemini. She changed the name to Gemma. Whatever. You're not, you're not playing along with <laughs> yeah. me here. You okay. really... Go on, go on, go on, go on. So, Yana might have got married to somebody yeah. and then changed Gemma's surname. Yes. Or she might have changed the surname because she didn't get on with her mum. I would I would do anything to have Yana back. Not I don't think she'd fit in. There's no one for her to no, kind I know, of click with. No, I know, but it'd be funny anyway. If they're so going to bring, gonna bring Scylla back, maybe. Right, so... Unfortunately, Les and Scylla's oven break, so Kirk, Fizz and Chesney try to cook it on the sunbed that they that Ch- Scylla bought to get that lovely glow. <laughs> Golden Doesn't pan. work for some reason, so Scylla and Yana decide to deep fry it at the chippy, and basically they burn the place down. Basically, yeah. Um, I just put that in the list because it was... Um, that so, One of the things that I found happening again and again and again in these Cory Christmas episodes is there's some sort of Christmas lunch disaster, isn't there? Like, we forgot to put the oven on or we forgot to take the freezer out the, 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 turkey, freezer out, out the, turkey. the turkey out the freezer or whoops, we've accidentally bought an alligator instead of a turkey. But this this one was, th- was that taken to the extreme and it didn't seem silly because everything that Scylla and Yana did together was a little bit silly. It was on that level of ridiculous. But it's not ridiculous to deep fry turkey. They do it all the time for Thanksgiving in America and I've always wanted to try it. Do they? I didn't even know that. Yeah, you can buy special cylindrical... Out, they, you do it outside though. Uh, you have like an outdoor one. Went wrong. And um, I used to have... Well, I've still got it somewhere. A... Uh, Martha Stewart Thanksgiving DVD and she mm. talks through some recipes and one of the things that she does in it is deep fried turkey. Oh. I've always wanted to try it. Well, the only bad thing about it is you can't have drippings for the gravy. Oh yeah. And also you might burn the house down. That's why you do happens, it outside. That's what happened here. Because they, um, Scylla and Yana worked together at the chippy, didn't they? Wong, yes. Wong's chippy, which they never, they used to have they used to frequent it, scenes in there, and then they? they never do, and it's all at the kebab place. But people still go to get chips. But do they get it from? Yeah, they do. They're, they're, they get the the chip the shop's chip still shop. there. It's called for your fries only now, and it has Why been for like Why does no one six, work seven, there? Years. But everybody bloody works in all the other places to a ridiculous amount. Mm. I don't know. It's, it's sitting there, ready to be used again, I suppose. But um, yeah, deep frying. I would, remember how we were so set on Chesney being an entrepreneur. Yes. Why doesn't he buy it and then go into into um Ooh, competition, competition with, Dev. with Dev? Yeah, that'd be good. There's a storyline for you, Corey. Right. Number seven. Nineteen ninety eight. 
Jack and Vera uh, refused to leave the Rovers. So this was long before your time, wasn't it? But you know Jack and Vera. You know um, Alec Gilroy as well, don't you? Can you remember what he looks like? Roy Barraclough? I'm, I'm fix picturing a man, if it's the same Does man. Does he have then... glasses and bald head? A lot of them do. Okay. Well, basically, this was the um, when the Duckworths were um, in charge of the Rovers, but they were having financial difficulties, as um, the Duckworths were Likely. often prone to do. And so, um, in that earlier on in that year, they or maybe the year before, I don't know, they would sold half of their share of the pub to Alec. Um, but it didn't really help the situation. They still didn't have any money. So Alec, just um, uh, late to 1998, bought them out outright. And um, he did promise that he would let them keep their jobs and stay living upstairs in the Rovers. But you can never really trust anything that comes out of Alec Gilroy's mouth. He was um, a total scallywag. Scallywag. He was a, a he was a nasty piece of work. But I still kind of liked him. Um, just, so despite promising to let them um, live above the pub, he tried to fire them and turf them out on Christmas Day, no less. Um, now he was seeing Rita at the time. Um, and I think they had they had flats next to each other above the cabin. Um, and anyway, Rita had tipped Jack and Vera off. I think it was something like um, Alec had sent Jack and Vera away on holiday or something. And then he planned to like change the locks or whatever while they were away. But Rita got wind of this, see, saw how cruel Alec was being, tipped Jack and Vera off. They raced back home and barricaded themselves upstairs in the Rovers. And this was... It was funny for lots of reasons. I mean, Jack and Vera were... A good comedy couple as it is anyway there, there were scenes of um like them to sort of huddling up for warmth together in bed vera still telling jack that because you know how horny vera used to get and this was a time uh, and during this jack literally could not escape her um alec tried to tempt them down and this would this worked on you i don't know by wafting christmas dinner smells up the stairs at them it well it, it worked so well on me michael that this is why i was talking about i wish i had a christmas dinner earlier mm. on so even just the thought of it being wafted at me makes me want well, to eat it. They were, they were able to resist because the, the, the residents of the street rallied round to the real sense of community spirit, got up a ladder and passed them their Christmas dinner up through the These windows. These days they can just do it by delivery. Yeah, does that serve my, my Or Weatherfield? get streetcars to deliver something from the bistro. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> this I, I, I just like this because of the comedy of Jack and Vera. I like the fact that they were like, get one over on Alec. And also the whole community spirit of it. And you don't get to see that much in Coronation Street now at Christmas, do you? Like in the early episodes. Yeah, everyone's separate, aren't they? Yeah, the, everyone's got their own little separate storylines. Apart from like the pub. Yeah, yeah. They, have their, they have their pub get together. And I suppose last year when they had Tyrone's best Christmas ever um, thing, that oh, was, yeah. that was oh, yeah, very that was community. Nice. But, Why wasn't that in your top ten, Scrooge? Oh, uh, it was just a bit twee, wasn't it? But yeah, get everyone getting together, um, giving the duckies their food through the window getting one over on Alec. Um, I, I really, I, I enjoyed that. That was comedy stuff. And it was the beginning of the end for Alec as well. He, by, by New Year, he'd left Weatherfield for good. He, he, uh, they outsmarted him and he went down to Southampton to uh, spend the rest of his days. And we've never seen Best him again. Yes. Um, right, right, Crazy Karen was your number six number one six. in 2004. Do you remember this one? You must this... remember this. This was Karen's leaving storyline. No. Yes, you do. This was... Karen leaving and she and Steve were trying for a baby and this was when Tracy was calling her Baron Karen because she couldn't get pregnant yeah and then, then um, Karen Karen was getting annoyed about Amy yeah because existing in general yeah because Amy was the the product of Steve and Tracy and 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 she didn't like having this constant reminder that her husband Steve had had a one night stand with well, Tracy it was also probably like it's your fault that you can't get pregnant because look Steve's working Steve's plumbing works fine. Well, fine. we know that from uh, from saying in this year, don't we? Yeah. yeah. So Karen did get pregnant, but she had a miscarriage at the Underworld Christmas party, and she goes berserk and she kidnaps Amy. And then on Christmas Day, Steve and Tracy find the car, her car, on fire on the red wreck, and they think that Karen has killed Amy. Yeah, because when she kidnapped Amy, she just like, put her in the car and drove off. Merry Christmas. Um, Tracy knocks Karen down in Steve's car. Tracy, yeah, Tracy goes nuts as well. She because she's convinced that Amy's dead, so she's she nothing dri- to live for. Drives into to Karen, but Karen's able to crawl up, makes her way they to have the like factory. They like a fight scene. They yeah, fight chasing on the each factory other roof. through the factory, Tra- fighting on the roof, and then they they end up stopping when Tracy looks down and sees that Roy has Amy, and they realise. 
that they love each other after all. Mm, not, not quite. Really. The episode so, ends with Steve kicking Karen out. See, I I think that this would have been more exciting if the episode had ended with Steve kicking Karen out, as in knocking her out. No, that doesn't happen. Kicking her unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> God, now that's two EastEnders. Um, this this was the one of the Danny Joyer. This is one of the only big big. <laughs> yeah, you would have done it, wouldn't it? Yeah. This is one of the only big stunts that Coronation Street has done on Christmas Day because everything else too that's, lazy. everything else that's on the list. And I I would hope that I've picked some of some of the best things. Everything else on the list um, is very um, just kind of family Sedate. dramas and. Not action scenes. No, and it makes me wonder why they don't do more Let's of this. Let's find out. Let's find out on Christmas Day. What, this year? They should do action scenes on Christmas Day this year. Well, I don't think they're going to. That's the thing. I mean, well, I they've, don't know what's going on. They've, they've, they've revealed quite a lot about what's happening on Christmas. I've tried to avoid it, as always, but I haven't been able as to. Always, as always, you as haven't always. been able to. Yeah, but it yeah. just, just makes me wonder why they don't have mega big action scenes at Christmas. There's no particular reason for them not to. I think they are maybe a bit wary of the fact that EastEnders has got a reputation for being having miserable Christmas episodes and people, it's somewhat of a joke to people how stupid and ridiculously sad their episodes are and I think they're thinking to themselves we're not going to fall into that trap but Coronation Street still does often have misery there's always know, rows right. and domestic uh, and, and violence and everything but they just don't have big explosions very much and I would have thought that if you want to tune in I probably because in real life you don't have explosions at Christmas <laughs> Uh, yes, you can do. See, they could have had Maria gassing everybody this Christmas instead, couldn't they? And oh, the yeah, I salon like flat exploded. But, Michael, when, when can you... I just point out that it's perfectly possible at Christmas to gas people without having the oven on just because of Brussels sprouts? <laughs> set that on fire. You don't set... Yeah, you wouldn't want, <laughs> want to set that on right? <laughs> But I'm just saying, when you tune in... Can you imagine? They're all lying there in the stupor of Brussels sprout farts and then Kurt comes in with the Christmas pudding going, let's set it on flame! <laughs> no, Kurt! No, we know that Kirk is very sensible around gas leaks, don't we? After yeah. leak. Beth, um, no, don't do <laughs> it! Don't switch the light on, Maria's part. <laughs> Fighting herself to death. Um... Yeah, no, all I'm saying again. is when when you turn on to a Christmas Day episode of anything, you expect it to be a little bit special. But yes, I, I agree always with always a little you. bit disappointed. Like I love. You're Doctor always Who. disappointed, but you've got ten Chris- special things that have happened on Christmas Day. No, but there, there should be I, no like Doctor Who. I love, but last year's Doctor Who was literally the first one out of its ten year run since it came back that I've, I've actually finished and thought that's a really good episode. It's usually a bit I like work myself up for something amazing and spectacular and. I never I really believe... like it, and I think it's sometimes the same for Coronation Street. I want them to really pull out all the stops. They're obviously capable of pulling out the stops. We've seen lots of good scenes like this this year. Why not for Christmas? I can't believe you're ignoring the fact that there was an episode at Christmas of Doctor Who that had Kylie and the Titanic. Kylie Minogue? Yeah. That was a rubbish episode. I never watched it. It's boring. I hate all Doctor Who episodes. The best thing that there's ever been on Christmas Day... Uh, only Christmas Falls and Day. Horses. No, not Only Falls and Horses. We don't like that in this household. Yes, we do. The Vicar of Dibley episode where she has to eat all the Christmas dinners classic, around. Classic, classic, That was the best comedy, Christmas Britain. episode of anything We should have stopped then. Ever. We should have closed the borders down, stopped doing anything, killed ourselves en masse after that moment because that was the peak of British culture. Never mind Shakespeare. Like, never mind Jane Austen. Forget all that rubbish. Dawn that Spr- was... Dawn French stuffing sprouts into her mouth the after eating three moment. Christmas dinners. That was the ultimate expression of British culture. And I don't comedy. know whether I'm just past it. In fact, I know I probably you am. Are. But I just... You, I, you I don't are. think Christmas TV is as good as it used Michael, to be. Michael, you don't watch Christmas TV. We you do. watch Coronation Street and you watch Doctor Who. That's because there's nothing else on that I want to watch. I'm sure well, that was little. There was loads of things on that I wanted to you watch. Get for- you got forced by your parents to watch things at Christmas. On, on television and now you're a grown up you don't watch anything because you're a miserable bugger no it's all like just watch it's all just things that we don't want to watch oh this episode of American Horror Story isn't Christmas Eve at all it's because we Wonder don't like because it was originally aired in May you idiot no it's because we don't like Miranda and Mrs Brown's boys no, and don't things like, either like of those. popular comedies these days anyway anyway um, that was uh, sorry for that little moment what a little side crazy rant. Karen is at number six on our list and at number five 
is 2006, when David is in the midst of his teenage rebellion, um, years. rebellion years, which last 16th birthday, 16th birthday, happy birthday. Um, so sweet 16. Running up to Christmas, he'd been up in the attic, I think, him and Sophie, and they discovered Ivy Tilsley's diary, his granny's diary, in which she mentioned Gail wanting to have an abortion when she was pregnant with David. She'd already had Nick and Sarah, and uh, and at the time she she wanted to maybe get rid of David. I can't remember exactly why. But um, maybe somebody three can tell kids us. is too much work. Maybe she just had some. Um, maybe she went to a medium and maybe said, like, "Get rid of this. Like, abort, oh, abort. <laughs> this child will be nothing but trouble." It's born of Satan resides within. <laughs> um, anyway, he presents this diary to Gail on Christmas morning, and then reads out the section where she's saying that she wants to get an abortion, which is a, a very David kind of thing to do. Um, but that's not all. Later on, there's a family Christmas dinner at the Platts. Um, everybody's there, including Audrey and her partner of the time, Bill Webster. He was still married, though, to Maureen... Maureen Webster uh, was Maureen Holdsworth. Um, and she hadn't been seen on Coronation Street since pff, 1997, 1998, maybe, when she and Bill ran off to have, uh, get married together. But anyway, she unexpectedly arrived in the middle of dinner... Um, everyone was shocked to discover that she and Bill were still very much an item, even though he'd been having it off with Audrey all this time. Even Audrey didn't realise this. Um, David, of course, delighted in revealing to um, Maureen all about Bill and Audrey's affair. Uh, cue family rows, and at the end of the episode, David threatening to move out. But um, we we were big, big fans of David's... Um, or Demon David, the teenage he was 16 rebel. 16 in 2006. It seems like that lot, not that Which long ago. Which makes him 26 this year, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, we, we loved Demon David, didn't we? And, um, oh, yeah, he's the, this he's the episode, best one, just like Crazy Nick's the best Nick. Yeah, this episode was just like um, the Christmas epitome of um, of his evilness. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, so he's made number five on our list. Number four from 2002 is from one of the best Coronation Street stories of all time, the Richard Hillman saga. Yeah, what a great story that was. Would you like to talk about this one? Well, everyone remembers what a scamp <laughs> Richard Hillman was, always trying to kill people. He was, what a scamp. Um, now, this is when Audrey was having a bit of a Cassandra moment, when she was trying to tell everybody what was going to happen and that Richard was crazy. And nobody believed her. Well, Richard had tried to set her house on fire. Was he, he, he was gaslighting her, her and making her look insane. So he, she spent Christmas lunch telling Emily Norris and Rita how she thinks that Richard is trying to kill her. Yeah? Yes. And then Norris is trying to light the pudding and slips up in the dark. Yes, they turn the lights off so that Norris can light the pudding and he slips up and, cut a long story short, winds up in hospital for Christmas night, leaving Emily at home with the flu. Uh, Richard yes. was also going after Emily. He was trying to get rid of Audrey. Was he was it, I suppose it for the money because she was troublesome. And uh, but Emily, he was trying to get all of her money, wasn't he? He, was, he wanted to get the house off of her. Had he he done his funny financial thing, which has since been retconned, where she transferred ownership of the house to him or something, 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 hadn't he? Um, and then, and so he then um, he he wanted to bump her off. So. Um, <laughs> Towards the end of the episode, Richard Hillman comes round number three, sneaks in, and um, basically tries to smother her with a pillow. What What else would you use? Um, Christmas jumper. Oh, that's a good idea. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't actually smother her. He He had the pillow there, if I remember rightly, just above her face. And um, And then, luckily for Emily, uh, Rita comes to the door and interrupts him. But that was a a very kind of macabre Christmas. But it was that storyline with Richard Hillman. Richard Hillman was so iconic, and like you're on the edge of your seat for like months on end. That was a 2002 was a pretty high point for Corey, I think. And um, yeah, and any new developments in the Richard Hillman um, storyline um, was certainly worth watching. So that's why I've got that. At number four. It was a good, it was a good one. Now this one, I remember this one very well. the top three now. 2007 was the Fizz and Rosie State Christmas present mix-up. <laughs> I just okay. laughed thinking about this. Now, this is when John had been having an affair with his student, Rosie. Um, he had been tutoring Sally, but he was also seeing Rosie on the side. And Rosie was trying to get John to get rid of Fizz so that they could be together. Mm. And I think Fizz suspected... I, I, 
I, I don't can't remember whether know. she did at the time, she, but she she might have thought that that Sally fancied um, John. I think Sally did fancy John, to be honest. She fancied the idea of John and being intelligent and and educated yeah. more than she yeah. did anything else. So what happens right. come Christmas Day, Gemma? Okay. <laughs> John bought two very thoughtful presents in two very different sizes. <laughs> one for Rosie's size and one for Fizz's size. Now on Christmas Day, um, she find, Fizz finds a present under the bed and she thinks, oh, it's, it should be under the under the tree. So she pops it under the tree. And then John sneaks off with Rosie's present to give to her at their little treat. Also what he thinks is Rosie's present. Yes. He just grabs this present from underneath That's the it. tree. Right, so they go to a quiet spot together and <laughs> um, they're about to exchange presents. But meanwhile, Fizz opens the box and she finds inside sexy underwear. And she thinks, well, this is for Rosie from John. So it's in the small size. So she, but Fizz thinks it's for Sally. But back, at, back with Rosie and um, John. In the car. In the car, Rosie opens the present and she finds a massive pair of pajamas. <laughs> yeah, very unflattering. It's not well. It's not the kind of sexy gift you give your mistress, is it? No. So and, it was and just hilarious. John both, is both like, of those oh, presents being I can't, opened. I can't believe it. Look on John's they face when he realizes. Yeah, Fizz, Rosie's like, oh, why did you buy me this? And John's like, I've ruined my life. Well, Fizz, Rosie must. I don't remember exactly, but Rosie must have realized that she's got Fizz's present. Because, I don't know. Well, she 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 knew that he typical, was seeing Fizz. Typical lazy man. He can't even be bothered to go to more than one shop. He just went to La Senza and went, what you got? I I I, I looking at um, Fizz's pajamas. They probably came from Primark. Uh, no, Lucenta sells <laughs> cheapy pajamas. Well, they're not cheap, Michael. Shut up. They both were in the same size box. Is the point I'm making? I don't remember. Anyway, well, how could he have confused them? I don't. I know. thought they were both in boxes. Maybe they were. You're probably right. Fizz storms round and has it out with Sally, and then John comes back. Everything comes out. What's happened with his affair? And Kevin thumps him. Let's not forget, Kevin is an a horrible Neanderthal. Oath. Yeah. Handy with his fists, yeah. And uh, this is, and, and then I think Kevin goes to prison for this in the new. Yes, year. he does. Yeah, but um, yeah, definitely, definitely very uh, memorable scenes. Just, just for literally when they open the boxes and find that they got the wrong present. Yeah, I just remember Hilarious. like, I, I really, this was like on the one hand it's comedy, but like as a woman, I, I can really feel Fizz's pain when she opens it and just the shame and embarrassment of having the wrong size number one and number two like being confronted with such a like massive slap in the face from your from your boyfriend or husband or whoever you know what i'm saying yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <coughs> um okay right we're going to the top two now number two is 1997 classic vintage choreo can you say 1997 is vintage i can you can um Teresa the turkey now this is before you watched it wasn't it but i'm sure you've seen plenty of Teresa the turkey moments on coronation street oh, clip many shows. times so this was the culmination of the battersby's first year of chaos in coronation street they'd arrived in july and basically spent the first half of the year peeing off everybody up and down the street and also a fair chunk of the viewers as well and um yeah so les had bought himself um, I probably got it from his dodgy mate Charlie West, um, this um, live turkey, which he plans to kill and cook himself. Um, and I think if if you brought in a horrible chavy family that you wanted everybody to hate, that's kind of a, a pretty good way to, to make you hate them at Christmas. <laughs> but yeah. um, Toya um, was, um, whose daughter was she? Was she Janice's daughter or Les's daughter? She was, she was Janice's daughter. Um, she was vegetarian because of spider as well she was she was um after spider at that time they rescued the turkey took it to the park's pet corner to to try and keep it safe from the the carving knife les finds out it's utterly furious cops in the car drives off to get it back and boom right into the turkey oh, which had found right. its way home um because it obviously fancied being cut up by les i don't know well, it had it cut um the the I think what what stands out in this storyline for me is the, the the scene where the turkey is actually hit by the car, and that probably sounds utterly barbaric to anyone who hasn't seen it. But it was done in a 
relatively comedic way, wasn't it? Like, you got the turkey's head there in front, and then there's just a massive load of feathers that get thrown up into the air in front of the car. And then um, on Christmas Day itself, the, the batter's biz are sitting around the table there. Toya's aghast that Les has still t- taken the, or scraped the turkey off of the road, cooked it, and she's obviously vegetarian anyway. Yeah. And, and Leanne's there poking through it, saying, oh, I can still see the tyre marks on it. She and Jan has refused to eat it. And um, it all goes a bit, a bit peak tong for the batters bees, really. As usual, that's yeah. what we like about them. But for, for again, for comedy, Christmas dinner mishaps. Um, that was pretty that's pretty high on that, your list. That that well, that's the it's highest comedy two. one on my list because number one um, is one that is definitely close to my heart, and um, I don't know whether other people would put this so high up, but I don't care. It's my list. Something. Yes. You. You have got a very romantic streak about Coronation Street because you go on about Maria and um, Tyrone up Blackpool Tower. Yes. And this is quite a romantic story here. Where's my romance? What have you done that's romantic for me? Um, if they were making a TV show about us, there would be no romantic moments in it. I'm sure there'd be some. Not for I me, though, I'm trying to think of any. Right, tell that, us what your clue. number one Number story. one Coronation Street Christmas. Christmas memorable moment is... From Michael. From Michael, 1994. Curly names her star after Raquel. Now, this was my very first Christmas on Coronation Street, and there may be a touch of the rose-tinted glasses and the nostalgia factor kicking in here. But um, for me, this when I think of Coronation Street at Christmas, this one scene... Have you? Do you remember seeing this on clip shows? Yeah. Yeah, but when they're... Oh, oh so romantic. Um, anyway. You never like this with me. Oh, uh, sorry. Do you, want, do you want a star note, Dad? No. Yeah. I want you to think of something for yourself. Okay. Are you, you literally never talk about romance or anything unless you're talking about Coronation Street. I just like this. I like this. Go on. Tell so, me more. And the, and the funny thing about it is that Raquel didn't actually really love Curly at no. the time. So That's the she, funniest part. She'd been going back and forth between Curly and De Barnes um, for, the, for the previous few years. Um, but Des had treated Raquel very badly, cheated on her with Tanya Pooley. So Curly swooped in there in 1994 and proposed to Raquel after the two of them had posed as an engaged couple at some work Christmas do in early December. Um, I think they kind of, Ra- Raquel kind of liked the idea that treat, the Curly was treating her as if they were really engaged. So when he proposed to her at the end of the evening, a couple of episodes later, she said yes despite the fact that really she still actually just loved Des. And I think she told Bette Lynch this as well, or Bette Gilroy, whatever she was back then. But, but she just wanted, she got carried away with the idea was, of a big wedding. Yeah, and... she was very, very romantic kind of person herself. She was obviously a bit of an airhead as well. I'm sure she she saw herself you know, all princessed up, like a, the perfect kind of wedding, a bit like Eva probably would do with Aidan at the moment. So she she accepts in the end She and she gets increasingly excited over December about the idea of this this massive wedding to Curly. And then on Christmas Day, um, towards the end of the episode, I think, Curly takes Raquel out into the yard. Let's not forget he was a, a keen astronomer. And uh, they look up to the sky, they point out the star and says, I've named that star after you. Next This time next year we're going to get married. And, and Raquel's like, oh, Curly, it's all lovely. And um, I just, I just, uh, as a, a young, how old was I then? 11 year old boy <laughs> watching this. You weirdo. I got utterly caught up in the romance of it. And that was probably when, at the time when I wasn't watching every episode. So I probably missed out on some of the fact that Raquel didn't actually <laughs> love Taz. <laughs> but, and, and then um, I think a few weeks after this, they have an engagement party. And then um, Raquel, I think she tells Taz she doesn't actually love Curly. But I don't care. For the, for the moment, that's what stands out to me as being, from what I watched, my favourite Christmas Coronation Street moment. Thank you for the tour of your psyche. That's okay. I hope you enjoyed that. And, um, I loved it. I, I wonder whether our listeners agreed with me at any point now or whether they um, thought I was coming up with Talking all the wrong things. rubbish, as usual. Oh, what do you mean, as usual? Shut up. Um, yeah, but obviously Hilda's Chris leaving too is going to be up there somewhere as well. But right. she was disqualified. We asked the listeners what they thought. 
and we had some suggestions. We did. Thank you for writing in because we just put some very uh, a very last minute post on Facebook today asking for your Christmas favourite bits. So Devore said, the year that Karen McDonald had a miscarriage and then had the knockdown fight with Tracy Barlow. Yes, that was what, number six on our list or something? I remember a scene with Steve on the street, fed up with the aggro and knowing he was going to have to tell Karen to leave. He told Vera first about a row. Vera commiserated, they could only complain about Jack giving her the same card from the year before, the actual same card. <laughs> Then he told her about the miscarriage and she hugged him right there on the cobbles. It was two characters that rarely connected, but she would have seen him grow up and she of all people knew what it was like to be round with your partner on Christmas. It was a lovely scene. That's a nice little extra bit to what we said because we didn't mention that. I, I didn't remember that. Although and the fact that Jack gave Vera the, the same card two years in a row just reminded me of me giving you the same engagement card. Not engagement card, um, anniversary Valentine's. card. Or was it Val 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 I Valentine's Day? I don't remember that. I think I it was remember. Valentine's Day card. Two, two years in a row. It's funny. But right. never mind. Abby says, There was a festive scene when the Platts and the Websters were gathered round for David to reveal that Gail had wanted to abort him. Jolly jolly. Yeah, so we had yep. our number five on the Christina same Christina said, there. When Deirdre found out about Ken's affair with Wendy Flamin' Crozier. She didn't say Flamin', but no, I, obviously I she meant in. to say that. I am not sure if it was Christmas Day or New Year. I just remember the Christmas tree. That was um, 1989, I think. That, um, yeah, the, the, the fair nerd, had come out. Nerd. No, I'm not. I just read it yesterday, making it sound like I'm just really thinking it off the top of your head. Yeah. Um, so that yeah, that was um, it was it was around about Christmas time when that all came out, um, and then we've got um, Jane. Uh, I have this one's just popped in actually. I haven't read this one. I hope this is a good comment. Jane says, "Oh my gosh, this is tragic." When Raquel broke up with Curly and ended her marriage. <laughs> there, I think this, in your face, Michael. Oh, I think this must have been 1995 or 1990, no, 1996. Um, the episode aired just before Christmas in Canada. Oh, uh, yeah, so they were obviously a bit behind us, but it was Christmas for the Canadians. I remember that because my mum and I were crying and we got funny looks from the rest of the family. Mm. Raquel is one of my favourite characters and I really was upset when she left the show. I was too, Jane. Jane, I hope you remember the um, the Christmas Star episode just as fondly as I do as well. <laughs> you sat. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everyone, for, for writing in, and I hope that's filled you all with even more Christmas spirit this week. And made you want to, to um, gash yourself with Brussels sprouts. Yeah. And I hope that this year's Christmas this year will be just gonna as good. This year is going to be number one on the, our list next year. That's my prediction. I hope it's going to be a good one. It needs it's to have... It's going to be amazing. It needs to have... It needs to have bites. It needs to have explosions, rowing. Explosions, according to you. I don't go over explosions, maybe. It's got to have... Family dinner mishaps. Tell, tell you what I don't like, but if it doesn't happen, I'll be a bit me. sad, is the Christmas me. music montage at the end, where they have some happy or... or either happy Christmas song or more than Christmas song, but all the characters looking pretty miserable with themselves at the end of the episode and that's become a bit of a tradition hasn't it that the first the first year that they did that was when um in that uh, 2006 when david revealed about bill and uh, audrey's affair to everyone they had oh i can't remember that what song special they had revealing an affair song that's really famous at christmas Oh no, they had somebody to love by queen no, not a christmas song what yeah um but yeah that i don't like it it's just a bit trophy, you like isn't queen it? No, I like that song. Like, yeah. I, just, I just get a bit fed up with every year thinking, hey, are they going to have the music montage? But we'll see this year. Will they have that? Well, Will they have I, I'm not, Who knows? I'm not, I'm not thinking it's good news on that front because we've already seen that they're, gonna, they're, not, they're, they're not above using um, music over the top. No, they, they love it. They've done it quite I know, but I would have thought with a new producer, they might, she might have gone not having that anymore. Maybe. Because that's the first thing I would say. No more music played over the top of the Question is, do they do it in Emmerdale? Don't know. Don't know. And we're back. Back to the present. 2020. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> hey, have you got anything I'm more to really offer really us this evening, Gemma, really than your Father Christmas impression? Um, so... What do we what do we reckon? Let's um let's go from two thousand and sixteen onwards. Has there been anything particularly on Christmas Day that stood out to you that maybe would um replace or kick off anything from that list? There have been lots of things that we've what I mean, there's been four years of really good Christmas Day episodes, isn't there? Since yeah, then? We, I kind of I usually get myself really excited for the Christmas Day curry and think, Oh, this is gonna be amazing. But Sometimes I'm ending up feeling a little bit disappointed by it. I mean, sometimes they can be a little bit um, formulaic with their You've musical montages yourself. and everything. But yeah, sometimes I can overhype myself on it. But looking at you know what's happened in the last four years, I do think that last year's Christmas Day episode stands out as being something quite special. And I can't remember what my immediate reaction to last year's Christmas one was, but 
reading the description of it now and remembering it, Derek falling off the Helter Skelter, Robert being shot through the rover's door, <laughs> Shona being shot in yeah, a box. That good. was actually quite a decent Don't episode, actually. Forget the Love's Young Dream, of Sarah and Adam. Oh, yes. Their yeah. engagement what happened you, last what Christmas Day as well. Such a beautiful that, that was a That was a proper, memorable, big, beefy Christmas Day episode, wasn't it? Mm. We've had a couple of other ones since then. I mean, we had Billy falling off a cliff in 2017, which was... Very memorable. Memorable for being a bit silly, but I, <laughs> I think probably that might even end up on the list if we were to revise this now, just because it was... Oh, uh, yes. It, as ridiculous as, as it was, and as mind. much as you as much as you look back at it now and think that was a bit silly, wasn't it? It was certainly a, a maybe a more memorable Christmas Day moment than some of the others on there. We had um, uh, they had that fight between Nick and Peter in two thousand and sixteen as well. Remember Wasn't when that, he... that was that the one where they were fighting up and down the street and they nearly got impaled on the... yeah yeah on, that on was the fence. brilliant. That was and, like my um, favourite Christmas. Who ever. was it? Was it Peter threw a gnome at Nick or the other way round? I can't remember. <laughs> that was a brilliant brilliant Christmas Day fight. So, I mean, most Christmases since then, there's been something memorable that, yeah, could maybe make it on this list. But we've also, like you said before, have watched a few other Christmas Day episodes just this year from Christmases past. And there weren't very many Christmas Day Coronation Street episodes in the first no. you know, 30 years almost. It wasn't, it, it, I it think wasn't a thing. It either... It either ended up being shown on Christmas just because it was an episode that would happen to be released on that day, or sometimes they even wouldn't have it because it was Christmas. Yeah, and it wasn't until the Den and Angie thing um, set the world alight in EastEnders like, in 86, on, was it? it? That the soap makers thought, we need to cash in on this. Although I saw today that, the, when do you reckon the first Emmerdale episode that was broadcast on Christmas Day was? No, what? 97. Oh. 1997, they didn't Is have any Emmerdale. To be- Early or late? Late, that's late, isn't it? Yeah. No Emmerdale on Christmas Day until 1997. Well, speaking of sevens, yeah. I think that that Hilda Ogden leaving do, which we really didn't put good. on this list we said because that we had it was good. Yeah. And I, I probably had seen it before, but you know, you it, it, it wasn't within my time of seeing it within contact and everything. I mean, that would that would probably go up there as number one. If, if, it, it'd be in my top three, I reckon. The whole episode was just oh. brilliant. So sad. So sad. It was bittersweet though, wasn't it? It was joyful with this with all the singing and all that. Um there were some still some great Hilda lines there. Yeah, um, gas taps. Et yeah, I, I absolutely loved it. Um but apart from that, I'm I'm not really thinking that there are very many other great Christmas Day episodes. I mean, we've seen the This Is Your Life that Annie Walker did. That was quite good though. That 60s. was that was yeah, that was set. It um, was it was an event, wasn't it? Yeah, I liked it. In the uh, where was it? It was in the uh, mission, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, and um, th- that had oh, Esther Hayes turning back up and um, and Billy Walker and and Joan making a, a reappearance again, but it, it it was all right, and it was the, uh, pretty much the whole episode was set. Oh, the thing with that was, wasn't it? The, do you remember the characters didn't know who the, the, this is yeah. your life was going to be, and everyone was worried that it was going to be about them. Yeah. Um, we also had the tug of war episode between the rovers and the flying horse. That was okay. That was oh, in sixty seven, nice, yeah. um, and then just recently we saw one where Deirdre was um, cooped up in the flat of some. Um, uh, it was one of our, the people from our, that she was counsellor of, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, one of our constituents. Yeah, that's what constituents. That's the word I was looking for. And then she does a a daring escape and from his flat. Like, that was quite exciting. Sorry right for you and your fancy house. And it's like, <laughs> huh. But I, I don't think I don't think that any of those apart from Hilda's leaving do would replace the other ones in my top ten. Um, but you never know. Maybe, you know, five, ten years' time, we can redo our top ten. And, uh, wow, who maybe knows what will happen. Maybe end up looking very different. This week, because we're recording this on a Monday and Christmas Day is on Friday this week, who knows what treats Coronation Street has in store. Well, yeah, by the time this gets uploaded, it's going to be Thursday as well. So for 2020, one of the crappiest years. Not for since. Coronation Street. I don't know. But... When was a crappy year? During the war. <laughs> That's crap. <laughs> anyway, um, hope you all enjoyed reminiscing and, and all that kind of made you feel oh, lovely and warm and Christmasy inside if you weren't feeling Christmas that already. Time. So um time. I think we'll leave it there. Have a jolly day. Bye everybody. Bye. Ho ho ho. <laughs>